we have been discussing the topic of convection and I discussed that there are five methods you can have uh, to determine the convection coefficient. Okay, again just for review, uh, we can use CFD and we have the governing equations that is one. We can use dimensional analysis along with experiments. So we'll have a correlation uh, for heat transfer. We can do an uh, analysis of the boundary layer equations. Glacier solution was an example of that. Or we can use the analogy between uh, heat transfer and momentum transfer. So that was like Reynolds, the modified Reynolds analogy or which is also called uh, Chilton uh, Colburn analogy. Or we can use the integral boundary layer analysis, which is an approximate method, but it is applicable for laminar and also turbulent boundary layer. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the theory and we will re revisit the dimensional analysis. When we do dimensional analysis, we have two options. So one option is we write down on what parameters uh, the phenomena depends. For example, if we take, let us say, the case of flow over a flat plate and we are interested in, say, the average convection coefficient. So you can write down that average convection coefficient. It will depend on all the parameters that you think are important like there will be density okay velocity of fluid okay then the length of the plate okay, dynamic viscosity say uh, thermal conductivity of the fluid thermal diffusivity of the fluid so like that okay we list all the parameters that is one option and based on this we can come up with the non-dimensional parameters. Okay. But there is a possibility of making a mistake in this method. For example, we might miss uh, some of the parameters which are important or we might, we might end up including parameters which are not important and make it unnecessarily complicated. Okay. So the another approach is to start with the governing equations and that's what I'm going to discuss in this lecture first. So if we write down again the boundary layer equations the momentum equation is in the x direction u del u del x plus v del u del y equals negative 1 over rho this thing is just dp uh, dx plus nu del square u over del y square. Okay, this is the equation. And the energy equation that is u del t del x plus v del t del y equals alpha del square t over del y square. So these are the equations for, these are the boundary layer equations because we did not include some of the terms which are negligible in the boundary layer. And we can non-dimensionalize this equation and then see what parameters we get. So that's what we are going to do. So non-dimensionalize the equation. And when we non-dimensionalize, we can define non-dimensional x, x star, as x over L, non-dimensional y, y star, as y over L, non-dimensional velocity, u star. We can define this as u over a reference velocity. And this reference velocity can be u infinity for flow over a flat plate it will just be u infinity okay similarly v star as v 
over this reference velocity non dimensional temperature as t minus ts over t infinity minus ts and non dimensional pressure as p over rho u ref square so if we non dimensionalize the boundary layer equation considering these it, it is very simple to do that uh, but the equation that we get is you get u star del u star over del x star plus v star del u star over del y star equals negative dp star over dx star plus 1 over Reynolds number based on L times del square u star over del y star square. Okay. So that is the x momentum equation. So you see in the non dimensional equation we got this parameter uh, Reynolds number. Okay. And similarly the non dimensional energy equation that becomes u star del t star over del x star plus v star del t star over del y star equals 1 over Reynolds number L times parental number times d square t star over d y star square. Okay, we get this equation. So, we got Reynolds number and parental number automatically by non-dimensionalizing the governing equation, the boundary layer equation, we got these parameters. Okay. And we can also write boundary conditions in terms of u star, v star and t star. So those let me write down, those are just common sense, u star at x star when y is 0, this will be 0 because velocity at wall is 0. Okay, u star at x star but y star is infinity this will be u infinity but u infinity can be a function of x okay, if it is not a flat plate then u infinity will be a function of x for example say you have an object like this okay. so flow velocity here says u infinity now as it flows over it u infinity is going to change the velocity outside the boundary layer it will be a function of x so i'm writing this as u infinity x star over the reference velocity okay this reference velocity we can take as u infinity upstream so in this region okay, that is the velocity when y is infinity okay and in terms of temperature you will get t star at the surface will be 0 and t star at y star of infinity will be 1 it will approach the free stream temperature okay so those are the non dimensional you see the non dimensional equations for momentum and energy and non dimensional uh, boundary conditions So based on this you can write u star will be a function of we are not actually solving these equations but we just want to see what u star will depend on. So if you look at this you see looking at this equation u star is a solution of this equation it will depend on x star, y star, pressure gradient and Reynolds number. So you can say u star is a function of x star y star Reynolds number and the pressure gradient okay, the non dimensional pressure gradient we discussed this previously that this pressure gradient 
is due to the shape of the object. And if the objects are geometrically similar, okay, then we don't have to consider this because this term is same. So u star is a function of x star, y star, and Reynolds number. You can say that okay, if the objects are geometrically similar. Okay. Now, uh, based on this, we can write see tau s. This is the shear at the wall which is given as mu del u del y at y equals 0. So this becomes mu in terms of u star and y star. This becomes mu u ref del u star over L times del y star at y star equals 0. And this you can write as uh, actually not this term. Uh, if we non-dimensionalize this and write Cf, this is a local uh, friction coefficient as tau s over half rho u ref square and substitute for tau s from this. You will get this equals twice over Reynolds number times del u star over del y star at y star equals 0. Okay. And we can write this as twice over Reynolds number. Now see this del u star over del y star at y star equals 0. We wrote u star is a function of x star, y star, Reynolds number and this pressure gradient. So if we differentiate this del u over del y and take the derivative at y equals 0, that will be a function of x star, Reynolds number and this pressure gradient. It will be some function. We, we are not interested at this point in getting what that function is. So there is going to be that term here. Uh, let me write it again. So you will get Cf is twice over Reynolds number times some function. Let us call this F1 of x star, okay, Reynolds number, and also you have this pressure gradient, which depends on the shape of the object. Okay, but I'm not going to consider this one from this point because this uh, will be same for geometrically similar objects. If you have same Reynolds number, then this term will be same. So uh, we don't have to consider this. Okay. Now, similarly, if you look at the energy equation, see, this is the energy equation that gives us T star. Based on this equation, you can write T star is some function. Let us call this F3. It is some function of x star, y star and you have Reynolds number in this, so Reynolds number, there is also parental number and you also have velocity in this and velocity also depends on uh, pressure gradient. So dp star over dx star, okay, but this we are not going to consider. Okay, so t star is a function of this. You can write it like this. Okay. Now the convection coefficient h that is negative k del t del y at y equals 0 over T s minus T infinity. Okay, this local convection coefficient. Okay. And you can write this in terms of T star and Y star and you will get this equals K f. This is thermal conductivity of fluid over L. This was also K f times del T star 
over del y star at y star equals 0. Or you can rearrange these terms. You can write HL over KF, okay, which is Nusselt number based on L. This equals del T star over del Y star at Y star equals 0. We get this. Now look at this temperature. If temperature is given by this function, we differentiate this with respect to y star and take y star equals 0. So the result will be, you will get it is some function, say f4 of x star, Reynolds number and parental number. Some function of x star, Reynolds number and parental number. So see, these are the results we were looking for in terms of non-dimensionalizing the boundary layer equation. Let me summarize it. We got CF is twice over Reynolds number times some function of X star and Reynolds number. And we got Nusselt number is some function of x star, Reynolds number and parental number. Okay, so that is another approach when we want to do a dimensional analysis, uh, we can write down all the parameters and determine what the known dimensional parameters are and what is going to be the form of the correlation okay uh, or other is we can non dimensionalize the governing equation that is what we did here and if you want to write average values see cf average so we are going to take an average of this that will be 2 over reynolds number times some function say let us call that as f2 so it will if you integrate this function over the length you will get there won't be any x star then it will be some function of Reynolds number. So the average CF depends only on Reynolds number. Okay, that's what we get. And similarly, average Nusselt number, this will be some function, say f5. You get that by integrating this expression, it will be some function of Reynolds number and parental number. So that's the idea. So for external flow, like for flow over a plate or flow over a cylinder, the important parameters are Reynolds number, parental number, and convection coefficient is given uh, in terms of Nusselt number. Okay. So this we got by non-dimensionalizing the uh, boundary layer equation. Now, we are going to look at uh, several correlations for turbulent flow because for turbulent flow, we don't get answers based on theory. Like the Blasius solution and the Nusselt number we got for flow over a flat plate, that was for laminar flow. Now, if we have turbulent flow, Okay, from turbul for turbulent flow, and we are talking about flat plate. We have this experimental correlation that CF is 0 0.0592 times Reynolds number to the negative 1 over 5. And this correlation is valid for Reynolds number greater than the critical Reynolds number so that the flow is turbulent and less than 10 to the 8. Okay, so this, this is an experimental correlation. Okay, for flow over a flat plate, the local friction coefficient in the region where flow is turbulent. And we also have an expression for delta. So in the region where boundary layer is turbulent, 
you get delta is 0.37x over Reynolds number to the 1 over 5 okay. uh, when the boundary layer is turbulent. Okay. Now if you compare these relations with the relations we had for laminar, see CFX for laminar it varies with x to the power actually negative half and if you look at the correlation for turbulent it varies with x to the negative 1 over 5. Okay. So the idea is friction coefficient in the laminar region it decreases at a faster rate than it decreases in the uh, turbulent region okay. because here it is x to negative half here it is x to uh, negative uh, 1 over 5. So let me write here. So the rate of decrease of CF is more rapid. in the laminar region than in the turbulent. Okay. Now if you look at the boundary layer thickness, see, delta for laminar flow it increases with x to the power half. But for turbulent, and we are talking about flow over a flat plate, uh, it increases with x to the power 4 by 5. Okay, so you have the opposite result that the boundary layer thickness in the turbulent region grows at a faster rate than laminar. Because in the laminar region it increases with square root of x and this is x to the power 4 by 5. So turbulent boundary layer increases at a faster rate. Okay. And Another point is if we compare delta and delta t, you see the ratio of delta to delta t, uh, we talked about this previously, this was uh, parental number to the power one third, let me see if that is right, yeah, it was parental number to the power one third, this was for laminar. For turbulent flow, the difference between delta and delta t is much smaller. So you can say delta and delta t, okay, they are similar for turbulent flow. Okay. Unless parental number is too low or parental number is too high, okay, they are uh, going to be of similar order. And reason for that is when the flow is turbulent then the role of molecular diffusivity is small and the turbulence plays a, a dominant role okay. whereas when the flow is laminar then the molecular diffusivity is the only mechanism that is playing the role so it is going to depend on the ratio of nu and alpha that is parental number but in turbulent flow turbulent transport dominates and molecular viscosity does not play that important role and molecular sorry the turbulence mixing is similar whether you are talking about the temperature or momentum okay that is similar so they are of the same order okay. now finally for turbulent flow we can use this expression that we have for CF. 
See, this is the expression for CF. And if you remember, we can use this expression along with the Reynolds analogy. That was Stanton number times parental number to the two third is half CF. Okay, that was Reynolds analogy. So we use this analogy along with this expression for CF. So we get an expression for Nusselt number. That expression is this local Nusselt number equals 0 0.0296 times Reynolds number to the 4 by 5 times parental number one third. And this expression is valid for parental number in the range of 0 0.6 to 60. Okay, so we get this expression. For local Nusselt number in the region where boundary layer is turbulent. Okay. Okay. So again, you can see based on this expression, the local convection coefficient in the turbulent region, okay, it varies with you have say x to the power 4 by 5 here and then you'll have x coming down here when you consider the convection coefficient. So it will be x to negative 1 over 5. Okay. Whereas the variation of hx in the laminar region, you had expression for that previously, it was like x to the negative 1 over 2. Okay. So again you can say that uh, hx decreases at a faster rate in the laminar region okay, than in turbulence. Because in the laminar region, it increases with, sorry, decreases with x to negative half, which is faster rate than x to negative 1 over 5. Okay. So that's the idea. Okay. So see, in this case, to get this Nusselt number, we used the uh, Reynolds analogy, which is analogy between momentum and heat transfer. Okay, now when we have a mixed boundary layer, so the mixed boundary layer is the boundary layer is laminar up to this point, say this is Xc and then there is transition and then it becomes fully turbulent. Okay. But for simplicity, we assume that there is no region of transition. So it is laminar up to this point and at this point it becomes fully turbulent. So it is going to grow at a faster rate. Okay. So this is the region in which boundary layer is laminar and beyond this it is turbulent. Okay. If we are interested in the local convection coefficient then in the laminar region you will use the formula that is applicable for the laminar region and let me write that formula again uh, that was Nusselt number this local Nusselt number is 0 0.332 times Reynolds number to the power half and parental one third. Okay, this is the formula. And in the turbulent region for local Nusselt number, the formula for the turbulent boundary layer is applicable. And that formula is Nusselt number is 0 0.0296 times Reynolds number to the 4 by 5 
times parental one third. Okay, these are the formulas, and they have the region uh, of parental number in which they are valid. Okay, this formula is for parental number greater than or equal to 0.6, and this is for parental number. Uh, greater than 0.6 and less than 60. Okay, so if you are interested in the local Nusselt number or local convection coefficient, we can use these formulas. But if we are interested in average, now the part of the boundary layer is laminar and the part is turbulent. So the way we average is going to be different. Let me explain that. So if you want to write an expression for average Nusselt number okay, over length L, this will be average convection coefficient times length over K. Okay. Now how to get this average convection coefficient? Okay, this H bar over length L, if the boundary layer is mixed, so this will be integral hx dx as x goes from 0 to l times 1 over l. We have to basically integrate this expression. Okay. If the boundary layer is mixed, it will become 1 over xc up to distance xc boundary layer is laminar. So, you are going to use the h value for laminar. Sorry, this won't be 1 over xc. Let me change this. It will still be 1 over l. Or let me write it again. Uh, this will be 1 over l times integral from 0 to xc of h laminar dx plus from xc to l of H turbulent dx okay. because the boundary layer is laminar up to xc and from xc to L boundary layer is turbulent and then this represents an average of that that will give us average convection coefficient. Okay. Uh, I am not going to do the math and I highly recommend that you work out this integral and you verify that based on this when you write down expression for average Nusselt number after integrating this expression you write average Nusselt number that turns out to be 0 0.037 times Reynolds number to the power 4 by 5 minus A times parental number one third where A is 0 0.037 times critical Reynolds number to the power 4 by 5 minus 0 0.664 times critical Reynolds number to the power half. Okay, you get this as average Nusselt number. Okay. And see the thing here is it is applicable when you have mixed boundary layer. Okay, so the part is laminar, part is turbulent. If you don't have mixed boundary layer, then uh, it is different. The value of REC okay, can be anything. The default value, if nothing is given, we take as 5 times 10 to the 5. So this is the Reynolds number at which flow becomes turbulent. Okay, that is the default value we take. And based on this, you get the value of A is 871. Okay. That is the default. But let us say the problem gives you a different value of critical Reynolds number. Then you will have to substitute that number here that gives you A. And then you can use this expression for average Nusselt number. Okay. Uh, a special case is if the boundary layer is turbulent throughout. Ok, 
okay, the boundary layer is turbulent throughout so you have say flow over a flat plate and let us say you have say some wires here so when fluid flows over these wires okay these introduce turbulence and it is possible that boundary layer is turbulent right from the beginning okay. so in this case what is xc xc is zero because boundary layer is turbulent right from the beginning so the critical value of x at which which it becomes turbulent as is zero and you get rec the critical reynolds number is zero based on xc so in this case the value of a is going to be zero and your average nacelles number will be just this thing times parental number to the one third so that's the formula when you have mixed boundary layer. Okay, so we are done with the discussion for flow over a flat plate. 